Hello and welcome to a look at the risk or sigma of a two asset portfolio with me Andy Duncan here at Finlingo.com. Before watching this video you might just want to watch our two videos on standard deviation and covariance and correlation before coming back to this one. But if you're okay with that let's get going. If you have a portfolio which I'll call Pi that has only two different assets inside it you probably want to know what the combined risk volatility is of the overall portfolio. Here's an example. I've got a portfolio with two assets Alpha and Beta. The top asset makes up 25% of the portfolio and the bottom asset makes up the remaining 75%. Alpha has a risk sigma or volatility level of 15% and beta has a risk sigma or volatility 35%. They're also as a pair negatively correlated together with a correlation coefficient of minus 0.80. This means that they're mostly moving apart from each other most of the time. We're also guessing that because of this negative correlation they cancel each other out slightly in a joint investment. But with the portfolio being bottom heavy on beta we're probably only going to get a small reduction in the overall risk level of the portfolio. I'm going to guess around 25% of overall risk which in simple terms means the returns are likely to go up or down by 25% in a single year. So let's see if we can confirm that then on a cunning spreadsheet. First let me input the figures. So that's 0.25 for weight alpha, 0.75 for weight beta, an alpha sigma volatility of 15% and a beta sigma volatility of 35%. So far, so good. We also need to insert that row correlation of minus 0.8. What we're trying to do is to work out the risk of the overall portfolio or sigma pi. And this is right down at the bottom of the screen. However, we do now face one of the worst equations in the whole world of finance. So let's break it down into 11 separate small tiny steps. First we square the alpha weight, then we square the beta weight. On step 3 we square alpha sigma and on step 4 we square beta sigma. On step 5 we multiply alpha weight squared against alpha sigma squared and now we multiply the beta weight squared against the beta sigma squared. On step 7 we multiply 2 times the alpha weight times the beta weight. And on step 8 if we do have the row correlation number we multiply that against the two sigmas. And here's another cunning thing. Sometimes we're supplied in some questions with the covariance of the asset pair rather than the correlation of the pair. But we can avoid panicking because you'll see here that the covariance is equal to the term that we want anyway which involves the correlation. So we're all good. I'll show you an example of that later on. But for now let's get back to step 9. Here we multiply the previous two results. On step 10 we add results 5, 6 and 9 all together in one big heap and now we have the variance of the combined portfolio. Some CFA questions will ask you just for this. If they do stop right here. But most questions will ask you for that new risk level of the combined portfolio. To get that just square root the variance in the final step. So that's it. We've now figured out that the portfolio risk is 23.36% which is close to my original guess of 25%. As you can see on the chart the 35% volatility of beta has actually reduced but it's still nowhere near the 15% sigma of alpha in the combined portfolio. So let's do an example now on Finlingo which uses a correlation number. Let me note down all the supplied values then I'll plug them across into the spreadsheet. So that's 0 0.57, 0 0.43, 3.39% and 13.87%. Finally we add 0.72 for the correlation. We're now ready for those tiny 11 steps to heaven. Square the weights then square the sigmas. Step through each small task now we get to the variance. On the final step we figure out the overall risk level for the entire portfolio. Click the right answer on Finlingo and we're as happy as Easter bunnies can be. So let's try another question but this time one where we only have the covariance instead of the full correlation number. Again I'll note down what we need. So that's 0 0.3837, 0 0.6163, 26.01 and 12% dead and minus 202.878 for the covariance. Unfortunately this is actually a good thing because now we can miss out step 8. We just move the covariance value directly across. Now let's step through all those bits and pieces again. We can miss out step 8. We've now got an answer so we can fully relax. Pick the right answer on Finlingo and move on. Head on over now to finlingo.com to get an infinite number of questions on two risky assets along with hundreds of other CFA question types. Finlingo. Speak finance fluently.